Hey guys, CJ here, and today I'm back with episode 2 of our modding tutorials. In this episode, we're going to be creating our basic item, which I have created a texture for right here. I spent a few hours on this. Uh, your texture must be uh, 16 by 16, 32 by 32, any factor of uh, any square. or uh, You know what I mean. It has to be related to 16. It can't be like 15 or something like that. And it has to be PNG format. Okay, so... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the mod code. I'm gonna create a new package. I'm gonna call it item. Inside of here, I'm gonna have underscore items because the items class is already taken by default Minecraft. So, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create uh, a public static final void uh, pre in it. And this isn't going to take any parameters because we don't need any. Now, I'm also going to create a private static final item, register item. And this is going to take in an item and a name. And you're going to have to import this, and it's going to come up with a box. Pick the net.minecraft.item.item. Now you're going to return I here. Now you're basically doing this so we can chain the commands up here. You'll basically see what I you'll you you will see what I mean in a second. Um, now we're going to uh, game registry and we're going to register uh, the item with a new resource location. You're going to take your mod info .modid and the name. You're going to have to import that too. There we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a public static item, item tutorial, In, uh, down here we're going to go item tutorial equals register item dot set unlocalized name, and I'm just going to set the unlocalized name to that, and I'm just gonna call it. I'm just gonna make it a basic item for now. In a second, we can create a custom class. Okay, so basically, since this method returns item, uh, we can go ahead and chain the uh, set unlocalized name command on there, which is a method from item. Um, and we take in the name to give it a resource location, and we set the unlocalized name here because we use that in a little bit. Um. So I'm going to go ahead and create a custom item class now, I guess. I'm going to call this item tutorial. This is going to extends item. We're going to have to import item. Now, by default, it's not going to take anything, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to call super, just in case. Also, before I forget, and mod ID, or, uh, uh, MC mod and info. I misspelled tutorial. Just gonna go ahead and fix that. Um, so we gotta make sure this is actually creating a new instance of the right item. And I think. Oh, first we have to put it into the proxy. So in the common proxy, I forgot to explain these last episode. Common proxy is executed on both the client and the server. Client is only executed on the client, server is only executed on the server. So on your client, you register renders on the server. I don't know what you do there, but on the common proxy, you register the items themselves. So in preinit, we're going to call items.preinit. So now that is going to go ahead and register the item. Call this method register it into the game. And if I go ahead and hit play, we should see that our item is in the game via the slash give command. Okay, you'll notice it's not going to be any in any creative tabs because we didn't tell it to be put in any creative tabs. So the only way to get it would be to give yourself the item like this. You type in the mod ID and you can hit tab. And here's our item. You might notice that that doesn't look too much like an item. That looks like an oversized block. And you'd be right because by default the model of an item is, well, a block until told otherwise. Now, we can fix that, but first I'm going to turn down the music. 
Good enough. So, we're going to have to do some more fun new Minecraft code. We're going to have a public static final void register renders. And here, we're going to register the render of the item with our private static final register render item i. And we got to actually make sure this is a void. So this piece of code is really fun to type out. It's Minecraft dot get Minecraft dot get item renderer. Oh, that's not it. Dot get render item dot get item model measure and dot register. And then we register the i for item. And new model resource location. I'm going to have to import that. I'm going to put this on a new line because this is a bit long. This is going to take our mod info dot mod id. We're actually going to concatenate that to a colon and then to the unlocalized name substring by five. So basically the unlocalized name of the item will look like item dot item tutorial. And substring removes the five first letters, so we're left with just this. So in the end, it should look like tutorial colon item tutorial, which is what it's supposed to look like. And then we have to give this last part inventory to tell um, that this is how it's rendered. And I seem to have forgotten an argument. After this, you have to put the number zero. So I comma zero comma, and then you have this thing. I don't even know if this will all fit. No, it won't. So I'll just do that to make it look neater. So then we register the render of our item. And then in the client proxy, in init, we call items dot register renders because server doesn't need that and it will get angry if you do that on the server side. Now we're not done, oh no. We have to create the model for the item, which is going to be the assets dot mod ID dot uh, models dot item folder. While we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and create the textures folder, which is the same thing except instead of models it's textures and items, which is plural right there. Okay, so in the model, I'm going to right click and create a new file. I'm actually going to copy this first. I'm going to right click, create a new file by that dot JSON or JSON. Now, JSON is basically going to tell it how to render the item. So we're going to create a parent of item slash generated, comma. And here we have textures. And then we have layer zero. This is going to be your mod ID colon items slash the item name. And finally, we can go ahead and take our uh, image. And I'm going to put this in to the textures. I'm going to make sure it's on copy so it doesn't move it. And then we're going to have to make sure we name this the right thing. After all of this, I'm going to press F5 on the project just to make sure. Now, if we run it, we should be successful. And there we go. You can see our item now has a texture. And uh, you see the name right down here. It says item.itemtutorial.name. Let's go ahead and fix that too. We're going to create another package in our resources. It's just asset dot, uh, mod ID dot lang. And then you create a new file, en underscore us dot lang. And then, oops, it's not automatically set to open an Eclipse. So I'm going to make sure it has the file association to do so. Use the default text editor, thank you. It did open my other text editor, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Okay, there we go. So if we double click on this, boom. And then we're going to put item.itemtutorial.name, and then you put the name you want here. And you call it tutorial item. Now make sure 
you don't have any spaces around this equal sign. It will cause you a lot of trouble. So just don't put any spaces here until you're into the actual name itself. Just to be safe, because the game is very specific about that. Okay, so as you can see, it now has the name of tutorial item when I pick it up. Also, this error down here, if you're wondering, it's it's not an error created by your mod if it says the client has sent too many requests. I don't exactly know what that is for. I think it's because I set up a custom username. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll show you guys how to do that. But we're uh, doing pretty well. We have a custom item with a custom name, which I think was way too difficult. In 1.7, it was one line of code to register the texture. You didn't have to create a model. It was default. It was easy. But then 1.8 came around. And then 1.9 came around. So, yeah. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you enjoy my content, go ahead and subscribe. T stay tuned for more uh, Minecraft modding tutorials. Uh, next, I think we're going to go for a block, which in 1.9 is even harder than in 1.8. You have to create an item for the block now. It's just ridiculous these days. Anyway, thank you guys for watching.